Kenny Woods, a lover of cold weather from Minnesota, embraced the beauty of snowy landscapes through activities like skiing, snowshoeing, and ice fishing with loved ones. When an enticing job offer arrived from Alberta, Canada, a place with similar climate and culture, he eagerly accepted the opportunity for a fresh start. Settling in a charming town near Banff National Park, Kenny marveled at the majestic mountains, clear lakes, and abundant wildlife. Embracing his new surroundings, he made friends who warmly welcomed him into their lives and invited him to partake in various activities. After three months in Alberta, Kenny yearned for a unique experience and decided to try forest hiking to explore the park's natural diversity. Though he had some hiking experience, venturing into such a vast and wild area was a new challenge he was eager to take on. After carefully searching online, Kenny found a suitable trail that offered moderate difficulty and promised a journey through diverse terrains and ecosystems. He prepared himself for the hike, checking the weather forecast to ensure a sunny and safe day ahead, and equipped himself with essential supplies. Kenny arrived at the trailhead early in the morning. He set off with adrenaline pumping through his veins and immersed himself in the tranquil beauty of the forest. As he walked, he took in the sounds of nature and spotted various birds and squirrels. After a couple of hours, Kenny encountered a sign warning of possible bear encounters. The sight of the sign brought a tinge of fear as he had never encountered a bear before. Despite the fear, Kenny reasoned that bear encounters were unlikely, and he was prepared with his GPS device and a knife for any situation. He recalled that bears were often more afraid of humans and preferred to avoid confrontations unless provoked. With determination, Kenny chose to press on, knowing that the rewards of the hike and the opportunity to immerse himself in nature's beauty were worth the slight risk. He continued his journey, eager to uncover what lay ahead in the scenic wilderness of Banff National Park. As he continued his hike, he reached a clearing in the forest where he saw a large meadow with colorful flowers and grass. He smiled at the sight of such beauty and decided to take a break there. He walked into the meadow and looked for a spot where he could sit down and eat his lunch. He found a nice spot under a shady tree near a small stream. He took off his backpack and laid it on the ground next to him. He opened it and took out his sandwich, his apple, and his water bottle. He was about to bite into his sandwich when he heard a low growl and huff from behind him. He turned around and quickly saw a horrifying sight. A mother grizzly bear with her two cubs standing at the edge of the meadow about 50 feet away from him. The bear was huge about seven feet tall when standing on her hind legs, with brown fur, black eyes, and a hump on her back. She had her mouth open, showing her sharp teeth and her pink tongue. She was snarling and growling, as if warning him to stay away from her and her offspring. Kenny felt the surge of panic and terror. He realized that he had unknowingly ventured into the bear's territory, and that she must have felt threatened or protective of her cubs. He knew that he had made a terrible mistake and that he was in grave danger. He remembered the sign and the guidelines he had read earlier. He knew that he should not run or scream, as this would only trigger the bear's predatory instincts and make her chase him. He also knew that he should not make eye contact with the bear, as this would be seen as a challenge or a threat. He knew that he should be backing away slowly, hoping that the bear would lose interest and leave him alone. He tried to do all these things, but it was too late. The bear had already decided to attack him. She charged at him at full speed, running on all fours with incredible agility and power. She covered the distance between them in a matter of seconds, leaving Kenny no time to react. All Kenny could do was raise his hand in front of him, as if to shield himself from the impending impact. He closed his eyes and braced himself for the worst. He felt a tremendous force hit him in the face, knocking him off his feet. He experienced a sharp pain in his head, as if a vice was crushing it. He felt blood gushing out of his wounds, soaking his clothes in the ground beneath him. 
He realized that the bear had bitten his head with her massive jaws, piercing his face with her teeth. He screamed in agony, but the bear's mouth muffled his scream. The bear released her bite and threw him to the ground like a rag doll. She then proceeded to attack other parts of his body, biting and clawing at his abdomen, his chest, his arms, and his legs. She tore through his flesh and muscles, inflicting deep wounds. Kenny felt every bite and every scratch, but he couldn't fight back or escape. He was unable to move or think because of fear and pain. He could only hope that the bear would stop or that someone would come to his rescue. But no one came, and the bear didn't stop. She continued to maul him mercilessly, as if she wanted to make sure that he was dead or that he would never bother her again. She grabbed his left leg with her mouth and lifted him off the ground. She shook him violently in the air, breaking his bones and ripping his tendons. She then threw him back to the ground with a loud thud, making him bounce on the hard surface. The attack lasted for only a minute, but it felt like an eternity for Kenny. He lost consciousness several times during the ordeal, but each time he woke up to more pain and horror. Finally, the bear stopped. Kenny was brutally battered and motionless. He was lying face down on the ground, barely breathing and bleeding profusely. She sniffed him once more, then turned around and walked away with her cubs. She left him alone in the meadow where no one could see or hear him. After enduring the brutal bear attack, Kenny found himself in a state of shock, drifting in and out of consciousness. He was incapacitated and unable to seek help, but he clung to a glimmer of hope when he recalled the GPS device in his backpack with an SOS button. Using his injured hand, he managed to send a distress signal. Kenny clung to his own life, desperately awaiting rescue. Thankfully, after what seemed like an eternity, a rescue helicopter appeared on the horizon. The skilled team acted swiftly attending to Kenny's wounds before lifting him to safety and transporting him to the nearest hospital. Though he eventually healed, the scars from this harrowing bear attack would forever remind him of one of the most vicious bear encounters ever recorded. Gavin and Connor Delaney loved hunting. They grew up in a small town in Alberta, Canada, where hunting was a way of life. Their father had taught them how to track, shoot, and skin animals since they were kids. They learned to respect nature and its creatures, but also to enjoy the thrill of the hunt. One chilly October in 2002, the brothers decided to go to Kananaskis country near Calgary to hunt elk. Elk were abundant in the area, and they hoped to bag a big one for their freezer. Gavin had a big game license and a rifle, while Connor only had a small game license and a shotgun. Connor wanted to get a big game license too, but he was still nervous about shooting large animals. He hoped that this trip would help him overcome his fear and gain some confidence. Early in the morning, they drove to the hunting zone, parked their truck, and geared up with orange vests, hats, guns, and backpacks. Their mission was to find elk, so they ventured into the forest following a trail. For about an hour, they carefully scanned for signs of movement or tracks, mindful of the fresh snow's loud crunch. Along the way, they spotted fresh wolf tracks, a common sight in the area. Aware of the potential danger, they remained cautious. Eventually, they stumbled upon crows feeding on a recently killed elk, likely taken down by wolves. With their guns loaded and emotions running high, Gavin and Connor found themselves at a crucial moment. Gavin's determination to find a live elk pushed him to press on, believing that the wolves might have left the area after their feast. Signaling Connor to follow, he stepped past the elk carcass and proceeded along the trail. Their search for a more promising hunting location led them deeper into the woods for another 15 minutes. However, their hopes were interrupted when they heard a menacing growl coming from behind them. Instantly alert, they turned around anticipating the presence of the very wolves they had encountered earlier. But the source of the sound was not wolves, as they expected, but a grizzly bear. The massive beast was barreling towards Connor, 
who found himself frozen in terror at the sight of the charging predator. The grizzly was a formidable sight, weighing around 600 pounds and standing at an imposing eight feet tall on its hind legs. Its brown fur was matted with blood and dirt, and its yellow teeth were bared in a menacing snarl, giving it a fearsome and hungry appearance. Connor's heart raced as he realized he had little time to react or escape. The bear's speed and proximity made any attempt futile. Within seconds, the beast closed the gap between them, swiping at Connor with its razor-sharp claws. In a desperate attempt to shield himself, Connor instinctively raised his hand, but it was no match for the bear's sharp claws. The creature's attack left devastating wounds on Connor's arm, tearing through flesh and bone and causing immense pain. Stumbling backward, Connor fell flat on his back, but the relentless bear was not finished. It stepped on his legs, crushing bones with its immense weight, adding to his agony. Connor's screams echoed through the wilderness as he struggled to endure the excruciating pain. With Connor vulnerable and defenseless, the bear prepared to strike again. Its intention to bite Connor was evident in its menacing posture. The situation was dire, and Connor faced an imminent threat to his life. Gavin watched in horror as the bear attacked his brother. He felt helpless and guilty. He wished he had turned back when he saw the wolf tracks. He wished he had stayed closer to his brother. He wished he had done something to prevent this nightmare. But he didn't have time for regrets or wishes. He had to act. Without hesitation, he raised his rifle and aimed at the bear's head, pulling the trigger. The bullet struck the bear on the shoulder, causing it to roar in pain. The bear's attention shifted from Connor to Gavin as it saw another target and started charging toward him. Gavin desperately shot the bear again, hoping to kill it or at least slow it down, but the shot seemed ineffective as it continued its relentless advance. His rifle eventually clicked empty, leaving him defenseless against the charging beast. With a swipe of its paw, the bear sent Gavin sprawling into the snow, forcing him to drop his rifle. As the bear prepared to strike again, Gavin frantically searched for anything he could use as a weapon, but he found nothing within reach. Realizing he was out of options and time, he braced himself for the imminent attack. Just as the bear lunged at him, Gavin acted swiftly, shoving the barrel of his gun down its throat. The unexpected move temporarily stunned the bear, who clamped his jaws down on the metal. It retreated 20 yards, giving Gavin a chance to grab his rifle and reload it quickly. Determined to save himself and his brother, he aimed once more, this time targeting the bear's head. With a well-placed shot, the bullet struck between the eyes, bringing the massive creature down in the snow lifeless. Gavin felt relief at having killed the bear and surviving the terrifying encounter, but fear and sorrow overshadowed any sense of victory. His brother lay on the snow, bleeding and moaning from the brutal attack. Gavin rushed to Connor's side, checking his wounds. Connor was alive, but the extent of his injuries was severe. Trying to stay focused, Gavin immediately sprang into action. He took off his jacket and used it as a makeshift bandage, trying to stop the bleeding from Connor's arm. He also put makeshift tourniquets on his injured legs, doing his best to ease his brother's pain. Speaking softly, he reassured Connor that everything would be okay, promising to get him to a hospital and vowing not to leave him alone. Despite the physical strain and pain, Gavin lifted Connor and carried him to their truck, focusing solely on saving his brother's life. Placing Connor in the passenger seat, he drove as fast as he could toward the nearest town. On the way, he called 911 on his cell phone to inform them of the emergency. The dispatcher assured him that an ambulance would be dispatched to meet them halfway. With gratitude, Gavin thanked them and continued driving, praying they would reach help in time. Eventually, the ambulance arrived and rushed Connor to the hospital. Gavin anxiously followed in his truck, consumed with guilt and blaming himself for what had happened. After what felt like an eternity, a doctor emerged with comforting news. Connor was stable despite the severity of his injuries. 
While he would need more surgeries and physical therapy, his prognosis was positive. Overwhelmed with relief, Gavin thanked the doctor and visited Connor's room. Weak but awake, Connor greeted him with a smile. They embraced, expressing love and pride in each other. In that tender moment, their bond grew even stronger, forged through the harrowing experience of surviving one of the worst bear attacks imaginable. Brian Davenport loved nature. He was born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska, where he learned to appreciate the beauty and diversity of the Alaskan wilderness. He owned a small store in the city, selling outdoor equipment and supplies to locals and tourists alike. He was single and lived alone with his loyal companion Zeus, a German shepherd. The two of them often spent their weekends hiking different trails in different parts of the region, enjoying the peace of the forest. One cold November in 1999, Brian decided to take Zeus on a trail hiking expedition at Chugach National Forest, a vast area of mountains, glaciers, rivers, and lakes. He had been there before, but he wanted to explore a new route that he had heard about from a fellow hiker. So he packed his things, hopped in his truck, and drove to the forest. The trip had been a success, with Brian and Zeus enjoying their time amidst the breathtaking scenery. They strolled along the picturesque paths, taking in the beauty of the snow-capped peaks and vibrant foliage. Though he was aware that bears, especially grizzlies, were common in Alaska, Brian remained relatively unconcerned. He had come prepared with bear spray, and he knew how to avoid provoking them by maintaining a safe distance and avoiding any surprises. As they made their way back to their truck around 4 p.m., fate took an unexpected turn. They encountered a grizzly bear on the river trail, about 50 yards away, accompanied by a cub. The bear seemed curious and cautious, initially noticing Brian and Zeus without any immediate aggression. Quickly assessing the situation, Brian froze and calmly instructed Zeus to stay calm as well. He cautiously reached for his backpack, where the bear spray was stored, keenly aware that any sudden movements could provoke the bear's ire. Hoping the bear would lose interest and depart, Brian proceeded with the utmost care. But then a sudden turn of events disrupted their tranquility. Zeus, sensing the impending danger, began barking fiercely, driven by the instinct to protect his beloved master. He dashed toward the bear's cub, which was about 20 yards away from its mother. The mother bear responded instinctively and ferociously to the perceived threat. She growled menacingly, but instead of charging toward the dog, it sprinted toward Brian. The bear moved with remarkable speed, covering the distance in mere moments. Brian's heart pounded in panic as he realized his grave mistake in letting Zeus off his leash. He knew escaping the bear was impossible, and he scrambled to retrieve the bear spray from his backpack, but it was too late. The bear was upon them. He felt the bear's massive, sharp teeth sink into his vulnerable flesh. He felt the excruciating pain as the bear bit his arm, tearing through his skin and muscles. He screamed in agony and tried to pull his arm away from the bear's maw, but that only made it worse. The bear ripped more flesh off his arm, leaving a bloody wound. Brian leaped into the river in a split-second decision hoping the water would deter the relentless bear or at least buy him some time. The shock of the cold stream washed over him as he plunged in. Much to Brian's dismay, the bear was undeterred by the water and fearlessly followed him in. It had one goal in mind, to kill its prey or drive it away from its cub. The ferocious animal struck again, clamping its powerful jaws on Brian's shoulder. The intense pressure and searing pain sent waves of agony through him as the bear's teeth tore into his flesh, causing profuse blood loss. Determined to survive, Brian fought desperately to break free from the bear's vice-like grip. He delivered kicks and punches to the bear's face and body, trying to inflict some pain or damage, but his efforts seemed futile against the bear's strength and anger. Miraculously, the water became Brian's ally. It hindered the bear from fully latching onto him, 
and the current assisted him in slipping away from the predator's grasp. Brian managed to swim to a safer distance, putting some space between himself and the bear. The bear, seemingly satisfied with the damage it had inflicted, decided to check on his cub and retreated to the shore. Brian, wounded and weak, crawled out of the water. Blood flowed profusely from his arm and shoulder wounds, leaving him feeling dizzy and disoriented from shock and blood loss. Brian desperately searched his surroundings, hoping to find any sign of his loyal companion, Zeus. His heart sank as he realized there was no trace of the dog anywhere. The weight of the situation hit him like a ton of bricks. He had lost his best friend. Grief overtook him, and tears streamed down his cheeks as he summoned the strength to return to his truck. With determination, he reached his vehicle, where he kept a first aid kit and a cell phone. Despite the pain and despair, he managed to call 911 and reported the dire situation. Between sobs, he informed the operator that he had been attacked by a grizzly bear and required immediate medical assistance. He tried his best to stop the bleeding, applying pressure to his wounds with bandages from the kit. He wrapped himself in a blanket to ward off the cold, trying to remain as comfortable as possible while waiting for the rescue team. As minutes passed like hours, Brian clung to hope, praying for his survival and that somehow, by some miracle, Zeus had managed to survive as well. Deep down, he knew it was a long shot, but he couldn't help but wish for the best. The pain of losing his faithful companion was almost unbearable. Time seemed to slow down until finally the rescue team arrived. They swiftly attended to his injuries and rushed him to safety providing the medical attention he desperately needed. As he was taken to safety, Brian held on to the memories of Zeus and the special bond they shared, vowing never to forget his loyal friend who had sacrificed his life for his human companion.